What are the prospects for the president and Congress to find common ground in 2014? We pose that question to two members of the Senate, Democrat Tim Kaine of Virginia and Republican Jeff Flake of Arizona. Senators, welcome to the News Hour. Senator Flake, I'm going to start with you. Looking back on what the president had to say last night, do you think it makes it more likely that Washington is going to address the country's major problems? I think there are a couple of areas where we do have some agreement, uh, where the Senate has already acted. For example, immigration reform. Uh, the president said that he'd like to see a bill there. Uh, the House needs to, to take action, and I think it will. Uh, so that's one area. Also, uh, trade. Uh, the president needs trade promotion authority. That's something that he'll likely get a lot more Republican votes for than Democratic votes, but he's, he's got to work to round up some Democratic votes for that. That's an area where I think we'll see uh, uh, both parties working together. Senator Kane, what about you? Do you think it's more likely things are going to get done as a result of what the president said? Um, I think, uh, Judy, it is, and, and not just because of what the president said. Even though our approval is still pretty low here in Congress, we've been on a bit of a roll. We got a two-year budget deal at the end of December. We got an appropriations bill done uh, in mid-January. Uh, yesterday here on the Hill, there was an announced conference deal on the farm bill a five-year farm bill, which we've been struggling to find now for a number of years. Um, and I agree with what Jeff said. I was sitting with a Republican House member, retiring uh, Virginian Frank Wolf, who's been in the House for 34 years, kind of back in, the, in one corner last night. And when the, uh, when the topic of immigration reform came up, I asked uh, Frank what he thought, and he said, look, I, you know, it, it'll go through some twists and turns. But he was feeling relatively optimistic about the House doing an immigration reform bill. It'll look different than the Senate bill, but then we'll, we'll get in conference and trade, and there may be some other issues. So we, we, we're, in, we're moving ahead. We've got to get over the debt ceiling hurdle and show we can do that without a stumble. But I, I detect a little more willingness to work together here. Well, let me pick up quickly on immigration. Senator Flake, uh, you both have now said you think that's a, that's a real possibility. Do you think that, there's gonna, that there could be an agreement that includes a pathway to citizenship. Well, the Senate included a pathway to citizenship. That's what I prefer, uh, and, and I think the Senate prefers in general. The House may say that those who are here illegally uh, can access current avenues uh, to citizenship, but no special path would be created. That would be a kind of hybrid that, uh, that might win the day. Uh, I think that that's a step forward. I think that's something that the President uh, could and would accept. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, it, it may not be exactly like the Senate did, but, uh, but that's fine. But you, you could accept that, and you're saying you think the president would? I, I, I don't want to say where the president is, but uh, I, it's something I could accept, and I, I would hope the president would as well. So not, ev not everybody who's here uh, desires to, to be a citizen. In 1986, it was made relatively easy for people to, to achieve citizenship, and in the end, I think fewer than a third ever did. Uh, but uh, my own view is if you're going to be here for 20 or 30 years, you ought to have the rights and responsibilities that come with citizenship, but Sen not everyone feels that way. Senator Kane, what about you? Is that language you could live with if it's short well, of a path to citizenship? I, I really want to I, I really keep battling for that path to citizenship because I don't think having kind of a, a permanent locked-in second-class uh, status um, is a good idea. Um, however, um, I think that Jeff's probably right. If, we, if we're going to predict what the House bill might be before it goes into conference, I think they'll do the border security and they'll do visa reform and, and maybe DREAM Act provisions. But I think on citizenship, they might, they might fall short of where the Senate is. That will then be a, a challenging negotiation. Um, but we shouldn't, uh, you know, we shouldn't predetermine uh, where that negotiation will go. Getting the House to pass something would be big, and then we we have our conferees and folks like Jeff who worked on the bill hard getting in that room and trying to figure out the, the best possible deal. Senator Flake, what about uh, some of the other things the president talked about? He talked about wanting to build ladders of opportunity into the middle class. Is his prescription the right prescription? And if not, what is? Well, I think what is the right prescription is to have conducive tax and regulatory policy uh, to allow people to climb that ladder. Uh, and I, I, I have my differences with where the president has been on that issue, uh, particularly on, on regulatory policy. It's, it's very difficult for people to get ahead. Uh, we have federal agencies, uh, partly because the Congress really hasn't functioned for several years, uh, that have uh, just taken it upon themselves uh, to impose regulations that make it very difficult for businesses to flourish and to hire. And so 
I, I think there are things that we can't agree on. The president talked about fundamental tax reform. Uh, I, I think we'd all like to see that. It rarely happens uh, this close to an election, but um, uh, hope springs eternal. Well, it sounds like the parties are still far apart on some of these formulas. Senator Kane, do you see uh, the prospect of the two parties uh, coming together on some of these things? I think we can, but you know the, the, these issues, the economic ones, may be more difficult because I do think on the Democratic side we're strongly in support of increasing the minimum wage. Had the minimum wage just risen with inflation from when it was last increased, it would be about at at where we're going to hopefully peg it as as we move forward. Uh, and I think that will be very positive in creating those ladders into the middle class. And then uh, there are the uh, education and, and human capital strategies. You know the most. Probably the best ladder into the middle class is a is is training, either education or career and technical training that will enable you to have the skills that we need in the 21st century. And the president talked about that last night: career and technical training, taking some of the federal programs that exist and trying to streamline and make them better. That was an applause line that you know reverberated uh, both chambers, both parties. I think we all recognize we can do better there. But I think the human capital strategies and then dealing with the minimum wage; those are. Uh, things that we have to do because we're seeing um, there's a lot of inequality and it's not just inequality we need more mobility there are going to be people at the lower end of the wage scale but they have to feel like they have a path where they can they can succeed and climb and, and a lot of people aren't feeling that now and, it, and I do sense a difference between the two of you Senator Flake what about the president's uh, stating last night yes I want to work with you Republicans when you want to work with me but when you don't I think that I need to take ex executive action, and he listed several he, he plans to, to execute. Well, I would say there, there's very little uh, that he can do in a productive way uh, to get this economy jump-started if he tries to do it unilaterally. Um, anything that uh, is going to do something for the economy, whether it's creating certainty uh, on the fiscal side, uh, some reform of our entitlement programs, or, as I said, conducive tax and regulatory policy, that's going to take uh, cooperation, collaboration with the Congress. So uh, I think there's very, very little productive he can do on his own. How do you see that quickly, Senator King? Um, I want the president to use all of his executive powers just like other presidents do. This president actually, in terms of executive orders per year, is probably less than a lot of uh, the, our most recent presidents. But, but I do. Uh, agree with Jeff. Probably the big things that will really help the economy uh, will require Congress working together. And we've got one staring us in the face, having gotten over the two-year budget deal. That was great. Not perfect, but we got a deal. Uh, yeah. Omnibus appropriations. We do have to get over this debt ceiling hurdle um, in the next few weeks. Do it together, not stumble. If we do, I think we will have shown that we're trying to provide some certainty, uh, which could be very helpful in the private sector. I know I was talking to Christine Lagarde of the International Monetary Fund recently, and she said, if you get over that hurdle, then this two-year budget deal, you'll start to see some economic lift, and, and that is the kind of thing. The president can't do that. That's, that's on us to, to try to find that accord between the Senate and the House. Very fast, final yes or no question to both of you. Do you think this year is going to be more productive than last? Senator Flake? Uh, yes, more productive. I, I, I agree with Jeff on that. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> Senator Tim Kaine, Senator Jeff Flake, thank you. Thanks. Thank you.